On behalf of Jim's family, I'd like to say thank you so very much to all who have come to be with them today as we share special memories of a child of God who touched our lives in many ways. I was asked to read a few uh, precious Bible promises for encouragement, comfort, and insurance, and hope. Psalms 150, 116, 15 says, God is sad when his precious ones die, but they will never be forgotten. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 16. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you did not grieve as others who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will resurrect, as did Jesus, those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive and will certainly not be taken up before those who have fallen asleep, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be taken up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 says, At the second coming of Christ, we will not all be asleep. Some will still be alive, but will all be changed in a flash in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, where the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed when the perishable has been closed in the imperishable in the mortal with immortality. Then the saying that is written will come true, Death will be swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? John 14, 1 to 3, don't let your hearts be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me, that where I am, there you may be also. Paula Ellis is going to have a song for us right now.
the shadow of the cross arose upon a lonely hill as the shadow Thank you, Paula, for that song. It gives us uh, a view of the future. Your friend and mine, Jim Fertig, was born in Los Angeles on December 23, 1937 to his parents, Edward and Elsie Fertig. And he died September 22, 2022. From all indications, he died peacefully and painlessly, for which we are grateful. He had three brothers, Roy, Frank, and Bob, and two sisters, Beverly and Mildred. He spent most of his younger years in the small rural town of Montgomery Creek near Nor in, in Northern California, near Redding, California. He served in the U.S. Navy from September 9, 1955 
to September 8, 1961, and worked as an engine man. Jim married his first wife, Barbara Jean Harris, on September 5, 1959, and raised her daughter, Victoria, as his own. Jim and Barbara had three sons, Johnny, William, and Donald. He has six grandchildren and five great-grandchildren. Jim is survived by his wife, Ella, his three sons, his daughter-in-law, Donna, his brother, Frank, and his wife, Lori, his sister, Beverly, and her husband, Riley, and his sister, Mildred, also by his six grandchildren and five great-grandchildren. When the children were young, the family began attending a Lutheran church in San Jose where they were living and where Jim was working. He was working in the building trade. Jim had his own business there for some time. Jim beginning, began attending AA while there and was proud of the fact that he was a member of AA for 32 years. He also served as a sponsor in AA and helped others overcome their drinking habit. He was very fond of AA's serenity prayer, the short version of which you see printed in your program. After his wife Barbara passed away on July 8, 2005, he left San Jose and moved to Redding, California and stayed with his sister Millie and her husband Ron. Jim and Ella met on eHarmony and first met face to face in June of 2006. After dating for six months, Jim and Ella were married on December 9th, 2006 in Redding, California. And I see a number of faces here today that were there for that occasion. They have enjoyed the past nearly 16 years together. After they were married, they began attending his church, but Jim disagreed with some of their teachings and suggested that they attend her church. She was a member of the Anderson Seventh-day Adventist Church. Soon, Jim asked me to give him Bible studies, which I did. He requested baptism and was baptized into the Anderson Seventh-day Adventist Church on April 18, 2009. I was there for his baptism. Jim and Ella moved to Cottonwood, Arizona on December 7, 2017. Jim has been active here as a deacon in the Cottonwood Seventh-day Adventist Church and has often helped on projects around the church. He was quite active playing water volleyball, pool, walking at the park where they live. He also played his guitar with the Heaven Bound Bluegrass Band for a while, who will be having a number a little later in the program. Jim and I were very good friends and did a lot together, including fishing, and hiking, boating, pool, and various projects that he was always willing to help me with. He and my sister Ella, my wife Paula, and I ate out as well as in our homes together many times, including eating out just two days before he passed. He was a very friendly person. It seemed that everybody liked him, for good reason. He was easy to like. He knew many people here in Cottonwood, and he will be sorely missed by all. I still miss him greatly. But Jim and I are both Christians, like many of you. 
and I intend to see him again soon because Jesus is coming soon. What a reunion that will be. Let's all, each one, every one of us, make it our goal in our lives to be there and see him again. Pastor Jack Kalan, who is a retired pastor here in Cottonwood, will bring us a message. It was almost exactly one month ago. I was sitting at my computer and kind of surfing through looking for the news headlines, and I saw that they were still talking about COVID, crime is accelerating, inflation is soaring, stock market crashing, Cardinals lost to the Rams. And then I got an email. said Jim Furtick had passed away. And at that moment, none of those things mattered anymore. What is it about death that dwarfs the mind-staggering issues of the day? Life is all-encompassing, all-absorbing. So many things clamoring for our attention. Things that seem so important until I saw the words, Jim Ferdy passed away. And those things just didn't seem to matter at that time. I remember years ago when we lived in Seattle on the outskirts of town and I was caught doing something I never ever wanted to do and never want to do again, having to drive into downtown Seattle during rush hour. Hundreds, thousands of cars, bumper to bumper, creeping in to downtown Seattle to work for eight hours or so, and then two or three more hours commuting back to a place, doing all of that just so they could have a place to go back to when they're not working anymore. And it just didn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. It, it seems that the entire world seems to be gripped in a meaningless emptiness. And, and the words of David came to mind in Psalm 39, verse 4, Show me, my Lord, show me my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting is my life. You've made my days a mere hand's breath. The span of my years is nothing before you. Each man's life is but a breath. Man is just a mere phantom as he goes to and fro, bustling about, but only in vain. He heaps up wealth not knowing who will get it. Oh, but the next verse. But now, O oh Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. And everything changes. What is that hope? In the beginning, God created a man and a woman, put them in the Garden of Eden. And God blessed them, and He said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. God wanted to populate the entire planet with men and women and children who would embrace the heart of a loving God and pour out that love to others. He wanted them to live forever in perfect peace and love and joy and happiness in His perfect garden, untouched by the sin and 
drenched scourge of sickness and death. That was God's plan. But alas, Lucifer, once an angel of light, rebelled against God, challenging God's character of love. He brought his accusations to the newly created planet in the Garden of Eden at the tree in the middle of the garden where Adam and Eve chose to honor Satan instead of honoring the God of love who made them and loved them. And thus they disconnected themselves from the source of life. And God said that they would die. So now death enters the scene. Not so much as a punishment, but as a result of separating from a loving God. Because both the good and the bad die. No, the punishment The sin is called the second death, and that's off in the future after the judgment. For now, God allows us to rest from our heartache, from our suffering, and from our pain. He allows us to rest. But that isn't the end, because Jesus proved it wasn't the end. When he stood in front of a tomb, with the stone rolled away and spoke to his friend Lazarus, whom Jesus said was asleep in the grave. And he said, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came out. Jesus proved that death isn't the end. He did it again on that Sunday morning. After dying on the cross, he rose again. And he proved that there's hope for us beyond the grave. To, to Jesus, death was more, nothing more than just a temporary sleep, like he said, until the resurrection. And that's the great hope that we have today. Paul taught us the same thing in the passage that Dennis just read a few minutes ago, 1 Corinthians 15, the dead will be raised. That's a promise. And again, he said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13, we don't want you to be ignorant about the rest of those who fall asleep or to grieve like, <clears throat> to grieve like those who have no hope. Ella, we're not like the rest of them. We have hope. And you have hope. The hope to see Jim again. Because the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And after that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds. to meet the Lord in the air, and we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. It's just a temporary sleep. And in a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, when Jesus comes, He will be awakened, and together, Ella, you and Jim, have the opportunity to go and to be with Him forever. What a promise from what a God. And there's another lesson for us in the story of Jesus and Lazarus. When Jesus saw Mary and his sister Martha, her sister Martha, weeping at the tomb, shortest verse in the Bible says, Jesus wept. He knew the heartache. He knew the pain that death would bring, and Jesus wept. There's nothing wrong with shedding tears as we mourn the loss of a friend. 
even when we know that the resurrection is coming. Because yes, we will miss them. But we have hope that there's something better. And I know that Jim had that hope. I know that. Because he clung to his faith in Jesus all the way till the end. And it's the same hope that we all share as Christians. I don't claim to know who is saved and who is lost. Only God knows that. Only God is the judge. But I do know that God, the judge of all the earth, will do right. And I trust that. So because of the hope that we have in Jesus, we can hope to see our friend Jim Fertig again. Jesus said, I came not to be served, but to serve. Jim gave his life serving others, as you have just heard. He was a faithful Christian serving as a deacon here in this church, and he was a man who loved his Seventh-day Adventist church. He was always here whenever he could be. And he even played his guitar in the band, Heaven Bound Bluegrass Band, as long as he could. One of the things that really touched me that Ella said, and Walter's already passed it on to you, but he took a friend to the Alcoholics Anonymous meeting in order to be a support. And while he was sitting there, he said, everything they said was talking right to me. And he decided, I'm not going to drink anymore. And from that point on, he began helping many others for five days a week, 32 years. And that's why the prayer is written in your bulletin. <clears throat> the prayer written by Reinhold Niebauer and adapted by the, the Alcoholics Anonymous Association, the prayer of serenity. And it meant so much to him. Jim loved people. He was really a friendly man. And Ella told me he never met a stranger. <laughs> he always liked and loved everyone that he met. He liked to have people around. He didn't like texting because he wanted people there. He didn't want to be poking on a phone. That's Jim. He helped anybody that needed help. And to testify to that, many of you here this, this afternoon are from the On the Greens mobile home park because Jim lived there. He helped you. He loved you. Spent time with you. Ella mentioned seeing him sitting on the swing talking to Ken. Is Ken here? I don't know. Are you here? There he is. And, and the others who played pool with him and water, Barbara playing water volleyball. And some of you, maybe you joined in on that too. And you're here because you know that Jim was really a special man and you loved him. He was a happy man. He, not only did he not like going anywhere without his dear wife, Ella, they were always together wherever they went. And then when Walter and Paula, Ella's brother and sister-in-law, moved to Cottonwood, they became more than just brother-in-law, but they became like brothers, as you just heard Walter say. That's Jim. And I can, I can still see him with that huge grin on his face, walking towards me with his hands outstretched ready for shaking or giving me a big hug. I miss Jim. And we all miss Jim. So, just as Jesus and Paul said, he's sleeping. His life is over. But not ours. 
And yes, we do have hope to see him in God's kingdom. But friends, in order to do that, we need to be there too. We're forced to realize that nothing in this world really matters like the question, what comes after we die? So what about us that remain? What about you? Jim's hope was in the hands of Christ. Where is your hope? If there was ever a time that we should be willing to reflect on our own lives to see where we stand in the eyes of an almighty God, that time is now. Instead of looking down to the darkness of the grave, look up to the source of life. He's there, and he wants you. That's what Jim would want you to do right now. And while it's true that we mourn for the loss of a friend and what a painful loss it is, Jesus said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Why? Because he also said, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, and I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come back to take you to be with me so that you can be where I am. What a promise. John also wrote in the book of Revelation, he said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There'll be no more death or mourning or sickness or crying or pain for the old order of things have passed away. I'm coming soon. Yes, dear friends, our friend Jim is asleep. He spent 85 years in this old world traveling on traveling on that railroad to heaven with Christ as his conductor leading him around the curves and through the tunnels. His journey on that lightning rail is now over, but we must journey on, determined to meet him there when our train glides into the heavenly depot as we too are traveling on the railway to heaven.
favorite songs to be done by the band. He really enjoyed that one. He always put a big grin on his face. Would you stand with me for the benediction? Loving Father in heaven, we're grateful for your love to us and your promise of the future of seeing our loved ones again. Be with each one here. Bless each person that they will resolve in their minds that they will be right with you and that they will be ready when you come to take your people home. Bless us in the meantime, Lord. Help us to treat each other as we want to be treated, to forgive as we are forgiven, to love as we are loved, Bless us and go with us, each one. Be with these that are here as they go to their homes. Give them traveling mercies, whether they're going across town or for many a long way away. Keep them safe. Keep their minds on you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. On behalf of the family, I would like to thank each and every one of you, particularly many of you who came many, many miles to be here. There is a reception to follow across the little breezeway over here. Please join us there and uh, have some refreshments and have time to visit. Thank you. <laughs>